Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics Complex Integration Example 1, as we illustrate the power of complex analysis in doing integrals. Here we're going to look at this integral, and one that we know the answer for, because if we take the derivative of the arctangent of x, we get the quantity here 1 over the quantity 1 plus x squared. So if we integrate this, we get the arctangent, and at the limits, uh, we get pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. The tangent of pi over 2 is plus infinity, and the tangent of negative pi over 2 is negative infinity, and when you subtract the negative pi over 2, you get this nice result, pi. The approach here with the complex analysis, and since we know this answer, that's important when you try a new technique that you know what you're supposed to get. We're going to look at this kind of a logical situation where we're going to look at an enclosed contour where as r goes to infinity, we'll have the integral of interest plus an extra piece, a semicircle, which I will show you that piece is zero, so that by simply doing the enclosed integral here, we have our answer. So first let's do that, and then we'll come back and show that the semicircle part is zero. To do this uh, enclosed uh, integral here, this contour integral, we find the poles. So uh, let's write 1 plus z squared the other way so we can see more readily that the product z plus i, you know, with z minus i does the trick. z squared minus here i squared is minus a negative 1, gives you plus 1. So our poles here, z is equal to i, and z is equal to negative i. The one pole that's above is the only one of interest to me since that's the one that's going to be inside the enclosed half. So what we can do is let little f of z be the good stuff. And for that pole up there, which comes from the z minus i part, have that isolated. And doing that, we'll have then the Cauchy integral formula tell us that the result is 2 pi i times the little f evaluated at z equal to i and that means 1 over 2i, and the 2's cancel, the i's cancel, and you have pi. That's the answer. But watch this. You can also use the residue theorem, and that is, I think, even faster, because this here says, with the one pole, I want 2 pi i times a residue. When you take the pole to be z equal to i, so here is my function that's in the integrand, and the way I find the residue is I throw away the singularity part, the z minus a, clear the denominator for that, and then put in i for the rest of it. So that's 1 over 2i, so I jump here right down to there, 2's cancel, i's cancel, and I get pi my result. So now let's show that the semicircular part is 0. So we do that by change of variable, z equals a radius times edi theta, and then dz is, uh, we just pull that i down is all you need to do there, and then you get everything else back, d theta, and substitute in for the dz, and substitute in here for the z squared, I get then 1 plus r squared e to the 2i theta, and notice here for large r, as r goes to infinity, I can throw away 1 here, this r is going to be super big. And then I notice that this r here will cancel one of the r's down here. Notice that the e comes up with the minus 2i theta, but I'm not that worried about these things. These are sines and cosines. They're not going to cause any trouble. They're bounded between like negative 1 and plus, plus 1. What I'm concerned about here is this r. So that's what I like to see, the 1r by itself down there, because now when r goes infinity, 1 over, see that large thing, that's gone. That's 0. And we have done it, and what a nice way to do an integral using the residue theorem to get that nice pi that comes right out of there, because the semicircular part is 0.